Two days ago, the documentary 20 Days in Mariupol won the Academy Award for Best Feature Length Documentary at the 2024 Oscars. This film about a team of Ukrainian AP journalists trapped in the besieged city of Mariupol working to document atrocities of the Russian invasion has been winning top prizes for the past 12 months. In this video, I'm going to share 12 lessons about the craft of documentary filmmaking that can be learned from 20 Days in Mariupol which can help us all take our work to the next level. Hey everyone, my name is Austin Meyer. I am a Bay Area based documentary filmmaker, National Geographic Explorer. And on this channel, I share the field tested skills, mindsets, and lessons that have helped me on my journey as a documentary filmmaker. As we jump into this case study, let me confirm that it is not necessary for you to have seen the film to get value from these lessons. And also as we go through these, I urge you to keep thinking about how these lessons from filming in a war zone can actually be universal and relatable to all of our projects, no matter what the context we are filming in is. All right, let's jump into it with the first lesson, which is an important one. And that is that documentarians and journalists make a difference. I've read numerous memoirs from conflict journalists and pretty much every book culminates with a reflection on whether their work makes a difference. Whether risking their lives to tell these stories of war moves the needle at all. Especially when there seems like a new tragedy on the front page of the paper every day. Is the value of telling these stories worth the risk? Well, on an individual level, the answer to that question for you and me is deeply personal. In the macro, I believe one of the lessons from this movie is that yes, the work of documenting war is incredibly important and absolutely does make a difference. There is a reason why when wars begin, some of the first military targets are outlets of communication. That is because when you control the narrative, you have power. This movie showed how when Russia invaded Ukraine, it wasn't just a physical military siege. It was also an information siege. This is the only radio signal you can catch in Mariupol now. Over the next weeks, Russia will bomb buildings, cut electricity, water, supplies, and finally, crucially, the cell phone, radio, television towers, we have to get out of the hospital to try to find the connection, to see what's happening to the city. They blocked communication channels, disseminated fabricated news stories at home and abroad, and then claimed that these true images coming from Ukraine were staged. So even though documentarians don't fire weapons or negotiate peace treaties, our work is the front lines of this information battlefield. In the case of this film, Mstislav Chernoff and his team's footage was the only news footage shot and broadcast bringing the world's attention to the atrocities in Mariupol. These images have not only shaped how the world views this war, but it will act as a historical record of this tragedy. We understand our past through cinema, documentary films, books, stories. Documenting stories carries significance for generations. And I believe this is not just the case with conflict reporting. This is true for all of us, no matter what kind of stories we are telling. The next lesson for all of us from this film is to find what we are drawn towards. When the war started in Ukraine, Chernov, a photographer and a producer drove to Mariupol when everyone who could was getting out of Mariupol. When we realized that the invasion was imminent, our team decided to go to Mariupol. We were sure it would be one of the main targets, but we could never imagine the scale and that the whole country would be under attack. They stayed inside the siege for nearly three weeks until the very last moments that they could. I know it can be difficult to relate our films to those of war correspondents, but stay with me. This team was drawn towards this story when everyone else was moving away from it. Their experience as conflict reporters, their Ukrainian heritage, their connections on the ground, all of these led them to go where no one else was going. Therefore, they were able to tell a story that no one else could tell. The lesson for us is to think about what stories we are drawn towards that most people turn away from, because that can lead us to truly unique stories that we are best suited to tell. And it doesn't always have to be dark or scary stories. Maybe you are obsessed with stand-up comedy 
And while most filmmakers don't want to go on the road with a comic filming late night bar sets for months, maybe that fires you up. So notice what you're drawn towards that other people turn away from. Now, the third lesson is that you don't have to know what final form your story will take before you begin. Just start. When Chernov started filming in Mariupol, he didn't go into it thinking he was going to make a documentary. He was doing so as an AP journalist, gathering news footage and making news dispatches that were distributed across the world. He only realized that there might be a longer form story when a maternity hospital was bombed and the moment felt so symbolic that dispatches couldn't fully capture the moment. But still, it wasn't until Chernov was able to escape the city with 30 hours of footage filmed, of which only 40 minutes had actually been published at that point, that he realized, oh wait, I might actually have a film here. So with whatever project you're working on, don't worry if you aren't sure what it is yet. Whether it's a short, a series, a feature, or anything else, sometimes you just have to start and stay open to what the story turns into. And speaking of those news dispatches, the next lesson is that shooting for news and shooting for documentary is very different. As it dawned on Chernov that his footage could make for a documentary, he had to shoot differently. In general, when you shoot for news, you shoot much shorter shots. A scene here, a scene there, and especially when you're sending dispatches like he was, they don't really need to connect in any way. And the main question you're asking in news is, what is happening? When you're working on a documentary, you film a lot more and your coverage is a lot wider. You have to make sure that your scenes are connected and that there are transitions. And the kinds of questions you ask people are different. It's not just about what is happening, but it's also about what people are going through, their feelings, their emotions, and the context of their lives. That's not usually what news has the time for, but thankfully, documentary does. The fifth lesson from this documentary is that you don't always have to sanitize your footage. This documentary is very heavy. It's very intense. It is unflinching in its depiction of war and atrocities. Anytime I see a film like this, I just know that there were long discussions in the edit about what images to show and what not to show. And in my research for this video, I found a quote from Chernov where he shared his perspective on this. He said, quote, It is crucially important for the war coverage not to be sanitized in any way, because if people see only, let's say, light version of the events, they tend to accept war uh, and it's just unacceptable. So we didn't sanitize anything when we were editing. The lesson for all of us filmmakers is to not shy away from documenting the hard moments, the moments that may really challenge the viewer or make them uncomfortable. When you're making your decisions in the edit, think about the function of those moments in your film. Is it purely a shock factor or is it an undeniable reality that leads to a more honest telling of your story? Now, building on that, this film really had me thinking also a lot about the delicate balance between kind of being emotionally heavy and, and being something that's so heavy, it numbs your audience. What I mean by that is, Chernov makes sure that the audience feels how war is horrifying and traumatic. But at the same time, he doesn't wanna push the audience away with an unnecessary abundance of violence. Too much blood, too much violence, and you run the risk of numbing the audience. This does a disservice to the story and the people in it. So the delicate balance is to be honest about the horror of war, while not overwhelming the audience. It's that sweet spot where the audience stays emotionally engaged. Now, honestly, you'll have to be the judge yourself with how that balance feels for you in this film, but there's no way that this movie wins the audience award at Sundance or the Oscar if it doesn't hit that balance pretty spot on. Keep thinking about the balance of emotions in your projects. Is it mostly heavy? Is it mostly comedic? Think about how to push the boundaries while not going over the line. All right, and the last lesson that I would put in this kind of amorphous category we seem to be in about emotional and physical proximity is to get close, but not too close. Oftentimes there are documentaries about war or conflict that don't really resonate with me because they are filmed and told from a perspective 
that is too distant from the people whose stories are being told. This distance damps down the emotional connection. Even if you see someone go through a difficult time, if you're too far away, it can feel like a voyeuristic viewing of someone's pain. What I thought this movie did well was we were right there in the room with the people experiencing pain. And that does feel actually natural. When someone is in pain, we as humans want to draw closer, we want to comfort them. And this film allows us to feel that sense of coming closer. And yet again, talking about balance, we as filmmakers also can't get too close, especially in high stakes environment like this film was in, we cannot be invasive. There are people in distress, others trying to save lives, and we need to remember that sometimes we just don't need that intrusive overhead shot that might look sweet. So on all of our projects, let's continue to think about how we can draw closer to become immersed in a scene without being invasive. All right, let's jump into some of the creative choices of the film and the lessons there. To begin, lesson eight is that stylistic choices need to be guided by thematic elements of your film. One of the big stylistic choices of this film is to use voiceover narration. This works so well because it is justified by the theme. This is TerraSport Fitness Center. Now it's one of the biggest improvised shelters in the city. For example, Chernov is part of the community he's telling the story about, and therefore, in a way, he can be their voice for some of the feelings that they are expressing. Another theme of the film is the impact or lack of impact of journalism. Therefore, having narration from the perspective of a journalist is a nice touch to elaborate on that theme. And anyone who drives us with our cameras and hard drives through miles of occupied territory would be taking a risk. So when you're making your film, think about this kind of stuff. Your stylistic choices should be thematically justified. Now the next lesson is that a specific timeline can be a really useful narrative technique. As the title of this movie reveals, the film takes place over a 20 day period, the first 20 days of Russia's invasion into Ukraine. But the filmmakers did explore an expanded timeline. In fact, they recorded dozens of hours of interviews with survivors who were filmed in those first 20 days and who were then found later after they escaped. The families that lost their relatives or doctors that escaped. Now, none of those interviews made it into the final film. Why? Well, because the filmmakers realized that the impact was stronger if the film stuck to that 20 day window. There is a power in that narrow perspective. As you are developing your films, think about the timeline you wanna work on. Does it make sense to have a really defined start and end point that is clear to the audience from the beginning. Like maybe you have the timeline of a school year or tryouts till the championship game. It might not make sense for your film to have a clear timeline, but it can really help ground a film and keep the audience clearly oriented or kind of have a clear orientation of where we are and where we're going throughout your project. The 10th lesson from this documentary is to leave the camera rolling. Some of the most impactful quotes in this movie happen when Chernov literally drops the camera to his side with the lens pointing at the ground and he continues to have a conversation with distressed people in front of him. Instead of holding the camera and worrying about the composition of a single frame, he notices that these are moments where he, he just needs to be a human being and connect with this other person without the barrier of a camera. And at the same time, he doesn't want to miss anything. So he keeps the camera rolling. These are the types of conversations that can really find unexpected life in the edit. And the lesson for all of us is don't be afraid to let the camera keep rolling. Don't always cut between shots. Use your intuition to figure out when a conversation is important or if emotions are heightened and just keep it rolling. Don't worry about always nailing your composition of your frame. A line of dialogue can make a film. Let's do our best to not miss it. And speaking of the camera, another thing that I thought a lot about during this film was how the camera kind of becomes a character, which leads me to the next lesson, which is that 
people aren't the only characters in most films. There are a number of moments in this film when people are very aware that they are being recorded. They call out to Chernov, telling him to film and bear witness. <laughs> Or sometimes they express frustration that he is filming. In both instances, we as the audience are very aware of the camera and its presence in the film. The setting of Mariupol is also a character in this film as we see the city being destroyed day after day. So as you work on your projects, think about what are the elements of your story other than people that also carry immense importance. These are often tied to the theme of your story. And then think about how can you document the change of those elements? How does the setting change? How do people's relationship to the camera change? How can you tell the story of these elements in the same intricate and complex way that we do for human characters in our film? Another lesson I took away from these moments where people are shouting at Chernov to either film or not film is that we don't have to impose our values on the audience. Showing the variety of reactions to the camera, to journalists, and to the conflict was an important decision because it's honest. And it also shows that Chernov is not moralizing anyone. He's not judging anyone. He's just guiding the audience through the experience of people on the ground in all its chaos. <laughs> As you create films, think about how you can let your images do the talking. Even when moments might contradict each other or make things feel more messy, life is messy. So it's probably just more honest, in which case it's the perfect move for your film. And with that, let's wrap up the video. If you haven't checked out 20 Days in Mariupol, it is streaming now on YouTube. And I'm curious to hear from you in the comments. What was your favorite documentary of this past year? Maybe I can do a deep dive on the lessons learned from your favorite film, if, if people liked this uh, style of video. I'll see you next week. Go out and tell some stories.